Matthew 26, verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, and Bethany means house of dates. Beth, B-E-T-H, means house. Betho, house of God. Bethlehem, house of bread. Jesus was in Bethany, the house of Simon the leper. Simon the leper. There came unto a woman, we know who, who she is, having an alabaster box, and that is a stone box or vessel. It was a storage box. And they got types and imitations of that today. Very precious means it was dear and sincere. It was valuable. And it is not the alabaster box that's very precious. Alabaster box of very precious ointment. We'll look at that in a moment. The ointment that's in that alabaster box is what's very precious. And poured it on his head, Jesus' head, as he sat at me. Now let's run over to Psalms. Psalms chapter 133, verse number 2. 133 verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard. You got a direct reference to Jesus Christ found in Psalms 133 and it gives you even even Aaron's beard. To the example of Aaron's beard, but what we find in Psalms 133 is what happens in Matthew 26. So Matthew 26, while he sat at me, verse 7, she walks in, takes his very precious ointment, and pours it on her on his head. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, anger, extreme anger. This made them angry, saying, To what purpose is this waste? You mean on Jesus Christ? To the apostle, the disciples, this woman coming in and dumping oil on Jesus' head. What do you think you're doing? You, you ruined the whole meal. And the disciples had that kind of attitude. Lord, send the people away. We can't feed them. They suffered the little children come on Jesus, and yet they try to get rid of the little children. For this ointment might have been sold for much. It's very precious ointment and it could and had a value. And she dumped it on Jesus' head. To their thinking. And yet Matthew the Holy Spirit says he poured it on his head. And given to the poor. You mean like what the Democrats in America think about. You know, taken from the rich and given to the poor. That's nothing new under the sun. Well, wasn't Jesus the poorest on this earth? Outside of his heavenly throne and heavenly home, Jesus said, I have nowhere to lay my head. Jesus said, you know, the foxes have 
holes and the birds of the air have nests, I have nowhere to lay my head. But they were talking about selling it to get money. And when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? Why are you giving a hard time? He rebukes the disciples, not the woman. For she has wrought a good work upon me. <clears throat> She's doing it for Jesus. And you're going to find, even in the Christian community, when you do something for Jesus, you're going to aggravate and anger other Christians and other Christians. Because you are giving to Jesus what they don't give to Jesus. And Jesus is pleased with what she done. They've done nothing to please him. For ye have the poor always with you. Well, I don't care what socialism. I don't care what communism. I don't care what the Democrats say. Jesus said there will always... Be poor people. There will be poor people in the millennium. Stated by God. Who raises up the poor. And puts down the proud. But me, Jesus, ye have not always. Now he, he's prophesying. I'm going away. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body, his head, and this drip down, she did it for my burial. He's foretelling his death. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. This is one of the scriptures where Jesus foretells of his death. Now, when it comes to that Death and burial. John. Gospel of John. 19. 39. <clears throat> and there came also Nicodemus. Which at the first came to Jesus by night. John chapter 3. And brought a mister, mixture of myrrh and aloe. About a hundred pound weight. And they took the body and wound it in font and linen clothes with the spices. As the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where they crucified there was a garden. And in that garden a new sepulcher. Wherein was never man yet laid. They laid, there laid they Jesus. Therefore because the Jews preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh at hand it's the Passover they gotta hurry up because the Sabbath is coming you can't do no work on the Sabbath Luke 24 Verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. They were coming to fulfill and finish the death burial of the spices and ointment that they couldn't do three days ago because of the Sabbath. Mark 16. And when Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, 
had brought sweet spices that they may come and anoint him. This is three days later. Now, what this woman does by the Holy Spirit is, <clears throat> it is taken by the Holy Spirit that there would be no time to completely accomplish everything in the burial of Jesus Christ. This woman anoints Jesus for his death and burial, Jesus says. In verse 12. And Matthew 26, 13, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, this gospel, there are other gospels. I had a fool as a Sunday school teacher get up before the church without the rebuke of the pastor. Of course, I said something. Oh, there's only one gospel. You're a fool. There are multiple gospels in, in the Bible. There's the gospel of Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's the gospel of the everlasting kingdom. Gospel means good news. And we are doing this lesson tonight because of Matthew 26, 13. Where this gospel? I must bring forth this woman Because Jesus says so in 26, 13. Where this, whether so this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, Daytona Beach, Florida, there shall also this, that this woman has done, we just read, be told for a memorial of her. So we're doing for the remor rem that, memorial of of this woman who anointed Jesus that made the disciples angry because she did something that she gave to Jesus of herself and of her own that was very precious. And Jesus rebukes his disciples for her gift. And then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot and he takes off, and in this moment here, he's, he's going to get in cahoots and try to sell out Jesus. Mark 14. Mark 14, verse 3. Being in Bethany, there it is. The house of Simon the leper, same thing as Matthew 26, as he sat at me, Matthew 26, there came a woman, no name mentioned, having an alabaster box of an ointment of spikenard. And if you see the, the video of the YouTube, I know you can't see it on Facebook, I apologize. It's an oil of balsam procured from the spikenard. It's a ointment from the plant. Very precious. So we're told that that ointment is spikenard. She break the box. More information. And poured it on his head. No one else could use this box no more. And we told in Matthew it is for his death and for his burial, breaking the box would also symbolize the breaking of the body of Jesus Christ. He, when he broke the bread the last night, the last supper, he said, my body shall be broken. She breaks the box. I don't even think she has any idea what she's doing. But God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit knows what she's doing. And poured it on his head. And we looked at the reference in Psalms 133 too. And there were some that had indignation within themselves. They kept it themselves. They didn't say it out loud. They didn't voice. They did not show their anger. 
and said, why was this waste, look at that, of ointment made? Again, upon Jesus who is God, the healer, the Savior, God, this spikenard ointment, what a waste, is what they said. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence. All right, we have a value now. And it is said by many that that 300 pence is a year salary of a worker in these times. You could have got a year's wages off that ointment and have been given to the poor. I wonder what they would have done if they had the 300 pence. And they murmured against her. It seems what Jews do, they murmur. And Jesus said, let her alone. Rebukes them, not her, rebukes them. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. Again. For ye have the poor with you always. And he's rebuking. It could have been given to the poor. It could have made the poor. Jesus, you're going to have the poor always. And he said earlier in, in Matthew, but you're not going to have me always. You can help the poor any day. But it's coming a day I won't be here for you to help. She's using her time wisely and correctly, and she's using it for God. And Whensoever ye will may do them good. You can help the poor any other time. But me, you have not always. Jesus' time on this earth is getting close to the end. She has done what she could. She's given Jesus all she could, as much as that widow who went in there with her last two mites. She had come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. And he's got to die to be buried. Badly I say unto you, whether so this gospel again shall be preached throughout the whole world, Daytona Beach, Florida, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. This will be found for all eternity. And then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve. Judas got so angry at the rebuke of Jesus, he went off to the priest and said, oh, what are you going to give me to sell him out? And he gets 30 pieces of silver. John, chapter 12. John chapter 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, was which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And there they made a supper. Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Okay, we're at Bethany again, but we've got three new names that show up. We don't see Simon. This is not Simon's house. This is Lazarus' house with his sisters, Martha and Mary. 
This is not the same story that would be found in Matthew 26 and Mark 14. This is a different, different people, different house. John 12, 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard. No box. Very costly, like mentioned before, but not the same story. And anointed the feet of Jesus, not the head. Get that. In Matthew and Mark, the head of Jesus is anointed. Now in John, it is the feet. And wiped his feet with her hair. That didn't happen before. In Matthew and Mark. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot. Now he's mentioned in Matthew and Mark after the story. Now in John chapter 12, Judas is mentioned during the story. Simon's son. That's not Simon the leper. And that's not Simon Peter, which should betray him. Why was not the ointment sold for 300 pence, same price, given to the poor? Same thing. Judas Iscariot was your socialist, democrat, communist. Take from the rich and give to the poor. And this he said, not that he cared for the poor, Sounds like our government. But because he was a thief, sounds like our government. And socialistic governments and communist governments, they're a thief. And had the bag. Judas was the treasurer of Jesus Christ. And bear what was put therein. Judas had to give an account of everything that went into the ministry of Jesus. Then said Jesus, let her alone again the day of my burying. Has she kept this? For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. And there's no mention of the memorial. So there's two different stories. There's Simon the leper and Lazarus who was dead and been resurrected. There's a woman who's unnamed. And then there's Mary. There's the head of Jesus. There's the feet of Jesus. Judas Iscariot. And yes, practically the same words are said over. But they're not the same. You say, well, how can this be? Well, I've been preaching at the farmer's market most Saturdays I can be there for six years and I practically say the same thing week after week after week. Maybe not exactly the same words, but, you know, Jesus saves. There's a heaven, there's a hell, that only by Jesus Christ your religion can't save, you know. But, this lesson I am doing for the woman in Matthew and Mark, God, Jesus, God said, memory, 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 memorize. So that's why I brought that up in Daytona Beach, Florida, to lift that woman up and to speak about the death and burial of Jesus. And notice in John chapter 12, the gospel's missing. And to bring up John chapter 12, and we're doing in this study, is to show you that 
Matthew and Mark are the same. But they are not the same of John. They are different. That Jesus has been anointed. What was it again? Spike Nard. Twice. His head. And his feet. Something that's in the Bible. It's true. And be God be the glory that they gave what they have of themselves. And Jesus appreciated it and recorded it through the Holy Spirit. And there were people that were close to Jesus that got upset. And they were rebuked by Jesus. And you're always going to have poor people And that we're speaking about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ.